the new coaches poll having been released on Monday, August 8th. The AP poll is going to be out next week. We'll talk about that one as well. Uh, but typically the coaches poll kind of sets the standard, really. Yeah, you're not going to have too many huge changes uh, because I believe that most people are going to watch this or they'll look at this and then realize where the coaches think that these teams are. Coaches, uh, more importantly, SIDs. Uh, they believe, of course, that uh, Alabama is going to be the number one team in the country this year. Now, rankings are very strange, right? This is one of those things where do you vote based on where you think they will end up at the end of the season or where you think they are right now? Because I think it needs to be a present tense version of this, right? It, I, I believe that that's the way that rankings should be done because you have no idea where they're going to go afterwards. So are you trying to make a prediction for the end of the season or are you just making it uh, based on what the team is currently? Because if it is what the team is based on currently, there are some big problems that I have with this poll. We'll go ahead and start off with uh, with just going through them, right? Uh, one through five, Bama, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, Notre Dame. No big issues there other than maybe Notre Dame. But the difference between like the top three in this poll and everybody else, I mean, everybody else is just kind of wherever. You could put Notre Dame at 20, you could put them at five, you could put them at 10. And I would think it'd be, yeah, okay, I can see it, right? It, beyond that, I don't know. Clemson at four, I mean, with that offense last year, you got to hope that they are moving into a much better situation going into this season, but who knows, right? Because this is a, I mean, this is a lofty rating uh, for a team that had three losses last year, but when you look at the three losses, yeah, you can kind of understand it, right? It, it does make sense because they they lost in overtime to NC State, uh, they lost uh, uh, to Georgia by one possession, and they lost to Pitt by 10 on the road. I mean, I can see it. If they get the quarterback situation figured out, absolutely. But that's also assuming that a new OC and a new DC is going to change nothing about the culture at that place. Maybe Dabo's got it running. We'll see. 6 through 10, Michigan, Texas A&M, Utah, Oklahoma, and Baylor. I might would rearrange a few things, and we'll get to that. We're going to talk about who's too high and who's too low here in just a second. But uh, overall, okay. like it, uh, All of it just kind of makes sense to me, right? It's it's whatever. Uh, Baylor, maybe a little high compared to, you know, depending on what they look like, I guess. Right now, there's a lot of question marks with them. So why in the world would Baylor be a top 10 team based on all the stuff that they lost? Eh, I mean, we'll see. Number 11 through 15, Oklahoma State, Oregon, NC State, Michigan State, and USC. I was kind of surprised that USC was as low as they are, but again, this is a coach's poll. I think that those guys understand you got to be good in the trenches, and I don't know that USC is currently. Uh, number 16 through 20, Pitt, Miami, Texas, Wake Forest, and Wisconsin. A lot of love for Wake Forest up here at number 19. Texas a little bit lower than usual. I think it's because everybody's a little gun shy with the Longhorns, and it, it totally makes sense based on what they have done over the years. Uh, 21 through 25 here, we've got Kentucky, Cincinnati, Arkansas, Ole Miss, and Houston. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into this. Uh, let's talk about the teams that I believe are too high in this poll. I think Notre Dame might be a touch too high at number five. They have not got quarterback figured out yet. You've got a first-time, brand-new head coach coming in. Yes, you've got a lot of returning production. You have uh, a transfer in Brandon Joseph that is a stud. Hey, there's a lot of hype around the program. Yes, recruiting hype is awesome. It doesn't necessarily mean anything on the field, especially for this year, right? So we'll see what happens with Notre Dame, but are they the fifth-best team in the country? I mean, if they were, uh, maybe they shouldn't be 17-point dogs at Ohio State in Week 1. But again... I mean, Ohio State's just a different level, right? Different level. Uh, number 10, Baylor. I've got it's too high here. I mean, they lost just a metric crap ton. Uh, I have no idea what they're going to look like. Dave Aranda, yes, we all believe that he's fantastic, but I, I kind of need to see another year of this at least, right? I mean, it, last year was only his second season. They had a lot of upperclassmen. Uh, what are we going to get out of the new guys? I, I mean, that's really the question for me. Uh, Oklahoma State at 11, I mean, they lost basically the entire defense along with the defensive coordinator. 
Like, Jim Knowles has gone to Ohio State. Uh, do we really think that Spencer Sanders is going to be the guy? <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not certain. Any year where we believe that Oklahoma State is going to be fantastic, it feels like they let us down. And it, it, that may not align perfectly, but that's the way that it feels sometimes. Uh, I've got Pitt as being just a touch overrated at number 16. Yet, look, you lose Mark Whipple, you lose Jordan Addison, you lose uh, uh, Kenny Pickett, and you bring in Keaton Slovis. Okay, like Signetti as the OC. I mean, we saw what he was at Boston College. Okay, like I'm not, I'm not thrilled with that. Uh, I mean, we'll see, we'll see. I mean, I, I expect big things from the defense again, but that's another team that lost like some pretty big pieces. Wake Forest, that is a team that won ten games in the regular season last year, and their post game win expectancy was not that, not even close. Like this team was, what what's the right word? Uh, they were somewhat lucky to get some of those wins. One possession wins against Syracuse, against Louisville, against NC State, etc. Like, you flip a coin and maybe that thing goes the other direction, right? So, if Wake Forest was coming off of a 7-5 and five year, or even just 8-4, and four, do we think that they would still be ranked at number 19 here? Uh, doubtful. Doubtful. And I've also got Kentucky here. I know a lot of people are in love with Kentucky, but... I have not found who's going to replace Wondell Robinson. I don't like the fact that they lost their offensive line coach, although I do trust Stoops to be able to develop offensive linemen. I, you know, can, when Kentucky has a really, really good year and they lose some key pieces like uh, like Pascal and, and whoever else, like they lose a ton off that offensive line, I, I have to wonder, right? I just have to wonder because this is not an overly talented team in the SEC. Eh, you know, 21... Maybe maybe a touch high, especially this early in the season. Uh, as far as teams that I have that are too low here, Texas at 18, I think based on, yes, I understand they went 5-7 and seven last year. They're swapping out quarterbacks. We don't know exactly what Quinn Ewers is going to be yet. However, with the talent that they have amassed on offense, yes, the question still remains, are they going to be able to gel, etc. This is certainly a top-10 roster. So... 18 might be a touch low. Might be a touch low. Uh, do I expect them to hang with Alabama in week two? Not necessarily. But how many teams are actually going to be able to do that, right? Especially early in the year. So Texas a bit low. And then I've got three unranked teams that probably should have taken the spot of some of those that are at the bottom of the pole, right? Penn State is unranked, and I think they are going to be awesome. Tennessee, unranked. I think they are going to be really good. BYU, unranked. I've got them as a 10-win team. Like, those three, I think, are going to be probably top 15 teams by the end of the year. Maybe one of them hits the top 10. I mean, we'll see. But that's the way that I feel about the coaches' poll. Uh, let me know your thoughts. I want to know what you guys think about this. Who's too high? Who's too low? Who was a surprise to you that they were even in the poll? I, I didn't have anybody that surprised me because I think you're just kind of playing grab bag at this point, right? That, that's how I see it right now. I think a lot of this is dependent upon what your team did last season, and that's not the way that I look at a previews, at, at rankings, going into a season. I look at a roster, and I figure it out from there. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.